Trading 212 has been closed for years now. And as far as I know, outside of the company, no one knows why. Well, that's changing pretty damn quickly. And in this video, I'll be discussing all the recent changes to Trading 212 and all their updates. And for the first time ever, I'll be able to show you exactly how many free shares I've earned from Trading 212 and how much money it's earned me. I've shown a couple of people privately and they seem to think it was pretty shocking. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. The sucker's going up. Welcome back everyone, my name's Paul. I'm brand new to investing and I have a dividend reinvestment portfolio here on Trading212. Trading212 has been closed to new accounts opening for the past two or three years now. After a huge surge in popularity during the lockdowns of 2020, when everyone was sitting on their asses and getting paid for it and watching new financial YouTubers pulling shocked faces at the market all the time. The stock market and a lot of brand new fintechs all went berserk. Trading212 was the most popular here in the UK and probably the EU and that led to it having a lot of reliability issues, a lot of weird social media backlash and this led to them eventually having to restructure their management and restructure their onboarding process and they may have been guided to do this by the FCA in some way. That's complete speculation, by the way. A lot of this is complete speculation. It's been nearly three years and all we've had is confusing updates and changes that have been causing problems on the forums. Most recently, it's these share restrictions that have been put on a lot of stocks. Trading212 announced that to protect the customer, they are limiting the total position sizes that you can have on certain stocks. This means that if I reach 9,711 shares in agronomics, I won't be able to buy any more. Well, not unless I ask really nicely. This led to another wet fart of internet outrage from monster drinking keyboard warriors who were delusionally angry that they can only buy 81,000 shares of Rio Tinto stock. At first, I can understand that it feels a little bit restricted. Cries of, I don't need my broker to be my babysitter came out again from people who don't realize that when trading 212 say, protect the customer, they don't mean they're protecting you. They're not talking about you. You can buy as much of that crappy meme stock as you want. But when it comes to your liquidations, trading 212 are probably protecting me. Continuity. And this is all speculation, by the way. I haven't heard anything different than what's already on the forums. But there are some serious questions to be answered. I couldn't find any other brokers in the UK that apply restrictions like this so openly. So the question is, why? The cynic in me immediately says, oh my God, Trading212 can't back up its investments. It has no money. I'm going to lose everything. Or it's possible that they see a lot of activity in these smaller stocks and that causes volume issues and they're not making any money off it. Hey, I noticed you can't trade as much on that speculative blockchain stock anymore. Come over here to CFD and use some leverage. At the cost of your soul. At the cost of your soul. At the cost of your soul. So cynical me says that trading 212 is losing a lot of revenue on poor CFD volume. When its accounts come out next year, that will mean lower revenue. It'll mean their balance sheet will be a bit smaller and it might not be as robust to deal with volatility in the markets. That's cynical and very speculative me. And the other side of me thinks actually this sort of control is pretty smart, especially as Trading212 is a pretty new broker and it doesn't have the same balance sheets as some of the bigger companies. When the market declined this year, brokers all over the world had a squidgy bum moment. Cash flowed out of the market quickly and brokers like Coinbase, Robinhood, eToro, Free Trade, and even some of the bigger companies like Hargreaves Lansdowne and fintech companies like Block all had real cash issues. If lots of people sell quickly and in volumes that Trading212 can't process, my money becomes at risk because of some paper-handed knob jockey on Reddit. Like American politics, the answer is probably somewhere healthily in the middle. Trading212 does need to be careful to limit position sizes just in case there is a mass pullout of the market. On the other hand, it's great to get those traders onto the CFD platform and keep supporting my free share dealing service with your Palantir losses. However, there's no doubt it has been quite frustrating and quite worrying that Trading212 has been closed for years now. We've no idea why it's taken so long 
it's led to lots of speculation about the company. And I've just continued to keep investing into the market like the idiot on the internet that I am. But about a week ago, some eagle-eyed discorders spotted a new free share button that popped up on the app. It gave the first indication that Trading212 might be starting to open up again because it was asking you to invite people. They've even added this cool little ticker that shows you how many free shares you've gained and how much they've been worth. And you can see here that during my time here on YouTube, I've managed to gain 743 new free shares and a value of almost £7,000. I thought this was incredible, an unbelievable amount of money, but a lot of people seem to be quite disappointed. They thought I should have had more. You see, that's the thing with YouTube. People believe that things are much bigger than they are, and it separates you from reality a little bit. This channel was always an experiment to show if a normal person with a normal job could grow a decent-sized portfolio in the stock market using a dividend investment strategy. And the experiment is slowly starting to show that this is possible. This is also why I've never actually withdrawn these shares and they've always stayed in the original investment account. I've kept the free shares outside of my portfolio because it was important to me to know if I could do this with my normal nine to five job. And they've been in the investment account for me to play with a bit of trading and buy some joke stocks. Originally, I was creating a long-term experimental video where I invested in lots of joke stocks that YouTubers recommended like Workhorse and HCMC and Palantir and all that. I quickly realized that that was a really dumb thing to do and I got out of them before I <laughs> lost all of my money. And then I attempted to learn a bit of trading, which went really well to be honest but I got bored and it was very hard very time consuming it really wasn't a, a proper strategy to earn a lot of money so I gave up on that and then I just dumped it all into speculative high growth risky stocks and just thought I'll never look at it again and that went pretty terribly the final amount is what you see today. I don't plan on changing anything that's in here all from now and I may even withdraw some of it in the future because it's just sitting there doing not a lot. But the stocks in there should probably recover first. I don't know how much more transparent I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm not going to show you my bank statements. No one needs to know where I get my weekend furry outfits from. So my dividend reinvestment portfolio is all my own money. Everything that has gone into this portfolio has been earned by me and I have very hefty deposits each month. Sometimes it's over 50% of my monthly income and I just keep injecting it into these dividend paying stocks. We've had a little lull in the market recently, a tiny dip in comparison to what we have felt over the past year. And by the end of the month, I will have added another £2,000 of my own money to this market. Walker on the Discord posted a previous video of mine created over a year ago when I only had 20, only, only had £27,000 in my account. Oh, it's double that now. That's crazy. The video was made a year ago. It's about inflation. It's about what I think is going to come. And for the most part, it was pretty spot on. But I didn't know that for sure. I didn't know for sure that the markets were going to go down. So I wasn't going to do something stupid like hold on to cash because that's proven to be really terrible over the long term or indeed shorting the market. I wasn't going to go near that. Ultimately, I kept investing into strong, high cash flow paying companies that give back to the shareholder. And now, apparently, I've doubled my account balance just in one year. If that's not an advert for slow and steady investing without all the hype, I don't know what is.